Bomb disposal is one of the most dangerous and stressful jobs in the world. One wrong move can send you and your squad on a speed run to the morgue. But this risk is not limited to bomb disposal engineers. Even though World War II has been over for decades, unexploded bombs on occasion cause casualties around the world. Like the incident in Germany in 2014, where a construction worker unknowingly dislodged a bomb while digging, which tragically took his life. In fact, 3,000 unexploded bombs are believed to be still lying buried under the city of Berlin alone, which would have been dropped by the Allies in the 1940s. It's this huge number of unexploded bombs underground and sea mines underwater that turned the EOD equipment industry into a $6.3 billion market in 2020. And with the wars going on in Ukraine and around the world, that number is only expected to double to over $12 billion by 2028. But why modern mine detection techniques still involve poking the ground with a long stick, why push-ups and deadlifts are so important to EOD teams, and how military bomb disposal can look like this, like that, or even like one of these, is not what you think. In Ukraine, mines and ordnance like artillery and mortars are placed and fired pretty much as often as there are seconds in a day. Some of this ordnance is cluster bombs, hundreds of tiny bomblets placed inside a bomb or artillery shell which cover a very large area. However, cluster munitions have a dud rate, meaning a percentage of them don't explode when they're supposed to, leaving them in an active and sometimes unstable state. They can stay like that for over a hundred years without exploding, until something or someone accidentally triggers them. Unexploded ordnance or UXO can be found all over the world where wars were fought. France and Germany still have an estimated 150 million UXOs from World War I alone. Today's landmines are even more dangerous. They are almost always hidden or camouflaged to blend in with their surroundings. The location of new minefields are supposed to be recorded, but war records are usually kept secret for a very long time. And because bureaucracy is boring, militaries often just randomly create minefields while on the move. This can be in the form of cluster munitions being dropped from an airplane, causing utter devastation for anything in their proximity on the ground or launching hundreds of mines using moving trucks, like this M136 Volcano mine-laying vehicle. But with so many mines and UXOs all around, how do EOD teams like this one make sure that areas are safe? The first step is detection. Speaking of detecting mines, how about finding out who is selling your personal data to potential scammers? Our sponsor Optree can help you battle them. You'll probably be shocked to find out that your home address, phone number, email and age and even the names of your relatives, basically your private data, is sitting right in the open on the internet. And all I had to do was to sign up for Optree and scan the web. And within just a few minutes, it had found 112 matches on these data broker websites that I hadn't even heard of. So I opened one just to see what it found. And my name, phone number and home address was sitting right there. Even the name of my spouse and one of my close friends was listed. I can only imagine what hackers and criminals could do if they wanted to target me. But Optree can help prevent them from taking advantage of my personal info. And it does that by removing my personal data from all these data broker websites that buy and sell my information. Optree has been awarded Editor's Choice by PCMag.com for the last two years in a row as the most outstanding data removal product on the market. Anyone can sign up on Optree for free to start their exposure risk scan and see which websites are storing their information. Optree even gives you detailed instructions for free on how to request data brokers to delete your data. And if you prefer to have Optree's robots send the deletion requests for you, you can upgrade to Optree's paid plans, which start at just $3.99 a month. You can get an extra 20% off any plan using my promo code THINK. For an EOD team this size, finding all the mines in a conflict zone is like trying to count the grains of sand on a beach during a sandstorm. Mines are usually buried or well camouflaged, but most are made out of plastic and metal, so soldiers can find them using metal detectors. 
but in a war zone, metal detectors can make the task even more difficult. Because scrap metal like shrapnel and bullet casings are everywhere, causing false readings. The second best option is to prod the ground slowly and very carefully with a stick or bayonet to feel for any possible mines. This way, a platoon can be 100% sure that the area that they cover is completely safe. Sometimes a long stick called boomstick, bank stick or hot stick is used, not only to move suspicious looking items from a relatively safe distance, but also to drag lines which are in close proximity to one another in order to look for secondary items, like a wire that could be connected to the primary suspicious device. But like a game of family monopoly, this process is unbearably long and it would take over 16 hours for an EOD squad to cover an area the size of a football field. Being in an EOD squad can also be very stressful and quite dangerous. And that's where the iconic advanced bomb suits is brought into action. Although the exact specs are classified, the suit can protect its wearer from a few pounds of explosives detonated in very close range so it's quite effective against anti-personnel and even some light anti-vehicle mines. However, advanced bomb suits could weigh up to 125 pounds, which is twice as heavy as medieval armor. This makes movement difficult and causes heat stress in certain environments. That's why fitness is so important for EOD engineers. And there's also this. You need to be fit to do this job while wearing this heavy suit. And if you think doing a few push-ups is tough, check this out. This guy set a Guinness World Record for the fastest run while wearing an 85-pound bomb suit. After crossing the finish line, he couldn't wait to get the thing off of him. His record was a one-mile run in eight and a half minutes. It's not difficult to see the challenges of disarming a delicate explosive device while in one of these suits. But if they're so effective in protecting people, why are they sometimes left in the closet? Just like dogs are man's best friend, bomb disposal robots are an EOD engineer's best friend. A combat engineer doesn't need blast-proof armor if they could stay a safe distance away and pilot a robot like this one to disarm the explosive for them. But just like a dog, these robots can't do very much and are mainly used for reconnaissance and identification of the explosive device rather than the actual disarming. The stress of this job is sometimes offset by doing something completely different. For example, some build homemade radio sets while others turn to their past and build simpler things. These manual methods of ordnance disposal work, but can sometimes take days just to clear a very small area. That's why when a place like an airstrip needs to be cleared up quickly, fire is fought with fire. Rapid Explosive Hazard Mitigation, or REM, happens when vital infrastructure, like Air Force runways, need to be quickly cleared of enemy explosives after a bombing. First, small charges are placed along explosive wires like these ones. The team then swing the wires around to make sure they're not tangled up. Finally, they lay them along the runway, wherever there are suspicious objects, in order to clear the entire area from enemy threats. And yes, walking away from explosions without looking back is also an important part of this process. That said, all these controlled explosions take a long time to set up. So the US Air Force is testing a much more high-tech option, lasers. RADBO, or Recovery of Air Bases Denied by Ordnance, is a powerful 3 kilowatt laser system mounted on a special mine-resistant vehicle, which can safely burn through almost any explosive with a 99% success rate. Although RADBO can only disarm explosives in its line of sight, which may work for airfields, but not for minefields. 
On the battlefield, buried mines can prevent even the most protected vehicles from passing through an area. This may look like the most overkill farming vehicle ever, but it's actually just a modified M1 Abrams tank. Like a farming plow, the Assault Breacher Vehicle or ABV scoops up the soil in front and puts it to the side, displacing any mines that could be hiding underneath. But what if a mine is buried a little lower than where the ABV can reach? Well, that's why it can also do this. Mounted on top of the ABV is a Mine Clearing Line Charge or Miklik. Before going into a minefield, the ABV launches what's essentially a fire hose of C4 explosives. The line can shoot 100 yards ahead and then detonates more than 1,750 pounds of explosives, which triggers the mines in its proximity to go off. Once the job is done, Miklik would have created a 36 by 300 foot clearing for troops to pass through safely. It would take a group of soldiers four hours to clear an area of the size, but this machine can do the job much faster. The countermine vehicle can clear the same area in only eight minutes and without the use of explosives. But why do they call this machine the Mine Flail? Well, when deployed, the CMV does this. This provides a striking force of over 2,000 pounds, more than enough to set off mines, which typically have an activation force of only 450 pounds. Despite the close proximity to an exploding mine, the driver is well protected, thanks to a blast shield deployed between the flails and the armored cabin. The vehicle then marks the cleared lane with metal spikes, pneumatically fired into the ground from both sides, marking a safe passage for friendly forces following behind. That said, there are reports that up to 50% of mines are missed by the flails, or they just get thrown around and made more unstable. The situation is not that different underwater. During World War II, somewhere between 600,000 and 1 million naval mines were placed, which were primarily used to prevent the movement of enemy ships through certain areas. And just like their land cousins, sea mines can remain active for extended periods after deployment. In the Baltic Sea alone, there are approximately 80,000 mines still floating around today. Sea mines are built with sophisticated sensors designed to detect passing ships. These sensors often use magnetic, acoustic, or pressure sensor technology to identify the presence of nearby ships and submarines. When a vessel is detected, the mine is triggered, creating an explosion that can cause significant damage to the enemy vessel. The US Navy has EOD teams composed of specialized divers. Navy EOD specialists are the only EOD engineers in the U.S. military that also train as special operations forces. They use anti-magnetic gear to eliminate their magnetic signature. But even bubbles exhaled by the divers could potentially trigger sea mines, which is why EOD teams use closed-circuit breathing systems that don't create any bubbles to avoid setting off the pressure and acoustic sensors. So far, our divers have simply avoided triggering underwater mines. But how do they detect them? Sonar and other sensors on board naval ships and submarines are useful tools for detecting anything in the water. But modern sea mines like this one are built to be stealthy. So sonar could be risky if you can only detect the mine once you're already too close to it. Instead, modern mine detection can look something like this. When researching their shape for new submarine designs, the Navy discovered that sea lions and dolphins are very good at detecting underwater mines. They are also very intelligent animals. Dolphins and sea lions are preferred over mechanical mine detection systems in certain situations because they can navigate complex and cluttered underwater environments. They are usually deployed from special vessels and are equipped with harnesses and cameras to transmit real-time data back to their handlers. And while dolphins and sea lions are primarily used for mine detection, they've also been involved in other tasks, such as locating lost equipment and even providing security for military facilities near the water. 